I just got a new toy in the mail. This is a Tiger Claw 1500 watt 12 volt 220 volt inverter. It is a pure sine wave inverter, or so they advertise. This is a really cheap brand, uh, so I have my doubts that it's going to be any good, but I'm going to check it out and see because it costs about a third as much as some of the big name brands out there. And uh, I fully expect sine wave inverters to become the standard uh, probably within the next five to ten years. Um, so this is probably one of the cheap Chinese ones that's trying to make inroads into the marketplace, but I thought I'd check it out and just see how it is. The box isn't very interesting. It was uh, shipped to me in this box, in the retail package, so hopefully it survived shipment okay. I haven't actually opened it yet. But uh, probably the only interesting thing on here is this label. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is the only real information on this whole box. Uh, 1500 watt inverter, continuous output surge, we'll have to see what the surge is, no load current, one and a half amps, that's pretty typical for a sine wave inverter, overload current is pretty low for 1500 watts, that's a bad sign, 11 to 15 volts, uh, I think the manual will have more detailed information on that, oh here it is, <clears throat> low voltage alarm, 10 and a half, 10 volts, uh, total harmonic distortion, 2%. That is pretty darn good for an inverter, and I am pretty sure that this cheap inverter is nowhere near 2%. I'm going to see if I can get a hold of a uh, power analyzer to actually check this out, but in the meantime, we'll just uh, ignore that. Uh, temperature protection, not too interesting, so let's just open the box and get to it. Right, cut the tape on it, so we'll open up the box here, and uh, let's see... Looks like there's not much in it. There's no, there's no cables in here. But uh, they give you a user manual. Looks like it covers everything from 300 watts to 3,000 watts. I have the 1500 watt one. Um, same specs that are on the box. Oh, they do have efficiency. Greater than 80%. 80% is pretty low, but I'm hoping that they're just more honest than the others. If so, 80% is, is not too bad for a minimum high efficiency 80 to 90 percent they say here and that would be pretty typical of a sine wave inverter but uh, we'll see about that set that aside uh, it looks like it's packaged reasonably well and this is supposed to be supposed to be new so I hope it is looks relatively new Take the plastic off here. Here it is out of its plastic, and there really isn't a whole lot to show. This has two outlets connected up in parallel, I'm sure, on off switch, single LED. And on this side, the input power lugs. This looks very familiar. It looks a lot like a Sentec power inverter, which uh, I don't particularly like those, so hopefully it's not inside. But Overall, the design is fine. Um, not a whole lot to see here, so if uh, you're familiar with my videos, you probably know how things work. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, try to open this thing up, because I'm really curious. It doesn't really look like removing these four bottom screws is going to accomplish anything in terms of looking inside, because I think it's a big extruded aluminum case, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. Yeah, I think that just pops off the uh, end panels. So, plan B. I will uh, remove these four screws and just pop off the end panel and take a peek inside. Okay, so I did get this inverter open. If you remove almost all of the screws, it uh, opens up exactly like the uh, Sentec inverter that I had mentioned earlier. And uh, I'm not actually going to take it all the way apart because it's a real pain and it's somewhat fragile. But uh, I'll just kind of open it up and shine a light in here so you can kind of see what's going on. They have an auxiliary fan here to cool the uh, magnetics in there. Uh, it's kind of a kludge, but I'm glad that they thought about it because those do get pretty warm. And the construction is basically identical to that Sentec inverter. 
uh, which I'll show you here in a little bit, with the, with the uh, main difference being those two large toroids in the back, over there and over there. Those are likely output smoothing for the sine wave. Uh, a couple other film capacitors in there, but uh, the overall construction is identical. Pretty much, pretty much identical down to the uh, heat sink pieces and, and everything. I could hardly tell the difference looking in here. And uh, that Centec inverter that I was mentioning is right here. Um, I pulled that out just to show you. This one I bought broken and, uh, and I repaired it, which is a bad sign because the circuit board actually failed. It wasn't the user this time. So there's a good chance the same thing could happen to this, but we'll see. Has the triple cooling fans over here, two power lugs, the ground. This side is uh, a little bit different. I don't know if you can see it in this light. It's a little bit different, but uh, overall it's a very similar inverter. It's probably made by the same manufacturer. This is likely just the uh, sine wave version, a little less efficient, so it's 1500 watts instead of 2000. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put it all back together and uh, we'll power it up. I have the inverter hooked up through, I forget if these are one or two gauge cables, but this should be heavy enough for a 1500 watt inverter. Up to uh, my bank of dual 20, group 27 batteries. These are fully charged and in uh, nearly new condition, so they should be good. I've got a, a DC clamp meter on the input cable. It's reading uh, 40 milliamps right now. It's not perfect, but uh, it's actually zero. And I'm going to turn on the inverter, see what happens. As loud as that loud. And this is showing uh, 1.3 amps. Okay, now the fan shut off and it's only pulling half an amp. Um, the light seems to indicate it's still running, so let's uh, turn on my multimeter and see what's going on here. See if I can do this one-handed. One lead in there, one lead in here. Hundred twenty volts. Well, it is still outputting. Switch it to oscilloscope. And uh, it does look like a sine wave. Sixty point three hertz. This multimeter isn't uh, isn't the best. It's not a true oscilloscope, so if there is noise, it won't uh, probably won't show it accurately. But that is a pretty clean sine wave. That is under absolutely no load, but pretty clean sine wave. Uh, so another thing that I want to check here: what is my voltage from let's see neutral to ground? So I'm going to leave that in neutral and put this in ground. Take a look at my. Uh, Oscilloscope here, and it's extremely noisy. Okay, how about from line to ground? So I have it in line here and ground, and it is still extremely noisy. And I'm assuming if I go from neutral to my battery over here. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So this inverter has a live neutral configuration. You can see that it's uh, about 60 volts at a very high switching frequency. High enough that this multimeter can't trigger on it. But uh, So this inverter cannot be connected up to a uh, household electrical system or you'll have your battery energized at uh, one half line voltage. I did a video on that, how not to connect your inverter to your house mains. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check that out. But this inverter does not have a hardwire option and that's because it doesn't support it. So that's good to know, but uh, let's uh, put some loads on this and see how it works. Okay, so here's my test setup. I have a battery charger, 45 amp battery charger, connected up to my dual Group 27 deep cycle batteries, hooked up to this uh, OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt inverter. On the output of that, I have my kilowatt meter that I have set to watts. We can see how many watts we're drawing. 
and I have my multimeter set up to its oscilloscope function so that we can see the output waveform and frequency and such. For loads, I just have resistive loads here. I made this light bar out of uh, just a 2x4 and a bunch of light sockets. These are 100 watt bulbs. And I also have this uh, 1500 watt electric heater. So we're just going to test some resistive loads here. The uh, inverter still hasn't turned on the fans, so I am, uh, they turned on immediately when I switched the power switch on for about a couple seconds, then they shut off. I assume they're thermally controlled, so we'll see if they turn on once we start loading this thing down. But uh, to start out with, I'll just switch on one light bulb. Uh, it probably oversaturates my camera, so I'm just going to set this down so we can see it better. So we still have a sine wave, 100 watts. Two light bulbs, we've got about 200 watts, still have a nice sine wave. Still looks good at 300 watts. So now I'm just going to see what happens to the uh, light level when I switch on uh, my electric heater here. Low, medium, high. So the uh, regulation isn't too bad. I'm switching it from high to off, and the lights uh, surge a little bit. See what the uh, output waveform does. This is about 1500 watts in high plus three light bulbs, so it's fully loaded. Here the heater's off, we're drawing 300 watts. I'll turn it on high. You can see that the uh, output waveform sags a little bit, but still stays reasonably good. And uh, if we take a look at the wattage when I'm doing this, we're at about 1500 watts. So it's fully loaded. Let's uh, turn on some more light bulbs here. Alright, so I have seven light bulbs on. That's uh, 700 watts. Now we'll overload this thing and uh, see if it protects itself like it should. Well, it made it unhappy. I assume if I switch it off, it'll turn back on. It does. So I'm just going to turn this heater on high now. So we're at uh, 1400 watts. Turn another light bulb on. I'm just going to keep turning these on until it shuts off. See what its maximum really is. A little under 15 actually. So I would have to say that this inverter uh, doesn't quite do 1500 watts, but it is pretty close. And its uh, surge capability seems to be just about zero, but... Uh, and now it's making a really bad noise. I think that's just one of the fans inside. See if you can hear that noise. Oh, yeah. I'll show you this if I get a light here. So it does have uh, load and temperature controlled fans. The fans run at a a lower speed. When the load is low and a higher speed when the load is lower temperature is high. One quick note, that awful sound that I was hearing is actually my power strip. Uh, this is really old and the uh, timer doesn't work properly so that's what was making the noise. Not the inverter, so the inverter is fine. Anyway, the next setup that, I, that I'm going to uh, test here is the surge capability of this. 
I had uh, said that the surge seemed to be about zero, um, but uh, that may not be true. It kind of depends on how they implemented the surge capability of this. Uh, they could use a, a, a quote, soft start technique that limits the output power but lets the voltage droop significantly, and uh, that is one way of accomplishing it. Or they may just limit the continuous output power to 1500 watts and let it surge for half a second or so to uh, something much greater. So I'm going to test that here. I have, uh, uh, this setup is uh, pretty simple. I just have it connected up all like before here. But I have this clamp meter set to uh, hold the maximum current that comes out of it. And I have this 12 gauge yellow extension cord snaking all the way down to my basement. I'll uh, go down there now and show you what it's plugged into. It's kind of dark down here, but uh, here's the extension cord. It goes to this old dehumidifier, 1980s dehumidifier here. And uh, I've used this a few times to do surge testing on inverters. It really is a good analog for surge on an inverter because it's a heavy inductive load. If you plug it into a wall socket, I've tested it, and it takes about a 3500 watt surge to get started. And uh, most inverters can't really power this thing. So I am going to test this 1500 watt inverter. And if it starts it up, I'll be somewhat impressed with it. So, here goes. And that seemed like no problem at all. Let's uh, quick run upstairs and uh, take a look at that clamp meter. Alright, back upstairs here. It's plugged into the inverter. It's running off of the inverter. And if I take a look at the clamp meter, the maximum reading is 280 amps. Which is uh, fairly impressive, really. That's almost a 3,000 watt surge, uh, or at least the inverter took about 3,000 watts of power, so probably output 2,500 or so. But uh, if I turn the max min off, uh, it actually takes about uh, 600 watts to run that thing, and that's about right. It's inputting 12 to uh, 13 volts right now because it's plugged into a charger, so uh, I'll test the efficiency later, but for now that's uh, pretty decent. So I'll shut off the dehumidifier here. Next thing I'm going to do is try uh, to stress it even more. So I'm going to put this on to hold the maximum again. And I'm going to turn on some of these lights. Alright, so we've got 500 watts now in resistive load, which is uh, pulling about 40 amps out of the batteries. That's pretty close. So I am now going to try turning on that dehumidifier with these light bulbs on. Alright, this time we're going to turn on the dehumidifier from upstairs so we can see what these light bulbs do. That'll give us a good idea of how much the voltage sags while it tries to start, if it starts at all. So this is 500 watts, plus that surge of the dehumidifier trying to start. And uh, we'll see if the inverter can handle that. I'll uh, get the lights halfway in frame so you can kind of see how they dim. And they didn't dim all that badly, really. And the, and the uh, dehumidifier started right up. I'm uh, starting to get kind of impressed with this inverter. Again, it's around 300 amps. For the surge, so I'm going to say that the uh, real surge in this inverter is about probably about one half second and uh, 3,000 watts. But let's really test it out a minute. I'm going to undo that, tell it to hold the uh, the maximum, and I'm going to uh, see what happens on a locked rotor draw in that dehumidifier. This inverter definitely won't be able to power it, and we'll see how long it uh, it keeps going. See how long the surge actually, see how long of a surge it can actually support. Yep, and it's about one half second. Again, it's uh, close to 300 amps. It's a little lower now that it's warmed up, but uh, it's still very respectable. So I would say that this. Uh, OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt inverter has a 3000 watt surge capability. 
And when I say 3,000 watts, I mean real 3,000 watts. Not, uh, not the fake 3,000 watts that they slap on every inverter that they sell nowadays, even if they have zero surge capability. So that's uh, probably going to conclude my initial testing of this. Probably the next thing I'll do is do an efficiency curve of it, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with this little inverter, I have to say. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if it's efficient. I'm going to do a, uh, a long-term, um, put a heavy load on it for an hour or so, see how hot it gets. I'm going to try to find a better oscilloscope to take a look at the output waveform so we can see if there's any high frequency noise in it. And uh, I'm probably going to try to get a uh, harmonic power analyzer also hooked up to this thing. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll record all of this stuff, but uh, to see if the total harmonic distortion really is under 2%, like they advertise. Um, Oh, and I should mention, the uh, I opened it up and peeked inside. The construction quality inside is, well, it's not great, but for what I paid for it, it's uh, not too bad. So, that all concludes this video. OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt inverter. So far, I'd have to say I kind of recommend this inverter. It is cheap, and uh, it's certainly not going to be as reliable as some of the larger name brands out there, but... Well, it's cheap. You don't have to pay a lot for it. Um, I think there's some reviews out there that mention that uh, the output is noisy. That's what I haven't checked yet. But it is a sine wave, and it seems relatively clean, at least on an oscilloscope here. This thing has a, a bandwidth of about 100 kilohertz. So, thanks for watching. All right, instead of waiting, I decided that I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. The, uh, the load test, I'm going to... Uh, have the inverter on, and I'm going to turn on this 1500 watt heater. It's on high now, and uh, you can see that it's pulling about 1300-1400 uh, watts from this inverter. And the inverter is pulling 125 amps from the battery. I'm going to load it down a little bit more though, so I'm going to turn on a few of these light bulbs too. So now we're at uh, 1400 watts, and we're pulling about 150 amps. And I'm just going to let this inverter run like this for uh, for a while and see if it overheats or shuts down or starts in fire or or what happens. Uh, these cables may not actually be able to take 150 amps, so I may have to turn the current down so that they don't overheat. But uh, I'm just going to let this run, and I'll let you know what I find out. One thing I want to note quick, you might have noticed that I have these uh, snippers here, laying here, and that is for safety reasons. If something goes terribly wrong, I have no quick way of disconnecting these cables, so I can just come over here and cut it. I kind of hate to cut these cables, hopefully I don't have to, but uh, just in case something goes wrong and I need to uh, save these batteries from exploding, I have a really easy way to do that. The inverter's been running for about five minutes now at uh, this 13-1400 watt load. And one thing I'm quickly discovering is that it cannot do 1500 watts continuous. This is the output waveform. You can see that the uh, peak and the trough are flattened off. If I uh, switch this heater to a lower setting, now it goes more to a, a proper sine wave. And the voltage is 112 volts. If I crank it back up to uh, about 1500 watt level, it sags all the way down to 105. So really, if I go over to my uh, watt meter, it can only do about 1000 watts and maintain full output voltage. So it really won't be able to do 1500 watts once it's warmed up. Um, it's probably only about 1000 watts. But that uh, isn't terrible because the surge capability really was quite good. So. If it sags a little bit in voltage, that uh, could actually help you. A lot of loads that are resistive, if the voltage sags, they will uh, take a little bit less power, like these light bulbs here and this electric heater. So it could could work out all right, depending on what you're powering. But uh, I'll let this continue running, and uh, we'll see what happens. I did some quick efficiency testing while this uh, long-term load is running here. It's been uh, 10 or 15 minutes now. Seems to be doing all right. 
but uh, my efficiency testing, which is uh, probably plus or minus two, three, four percent, uh, at full load it was 85 percent efficient. That's at about 1400 watts output. If I bump that down to 1000 watts output, it gained one percent, so it was 86 percent efficient. If I went all the way down to 300 watt output, it was uh, once again about 82 percent efficient. So this inverter is 80 to 85 percent efficient, which isn't great, but it is a sine wave inverter, so your loads are a little bit more efficient if you're powering a, uh, a refrigerator or something. Your refrigerator will take less power on this than it would on a modified sine wave inverter. So the overall system efficiency might not be too much different, but the real efficiency on this, as measured, is 80 to 85 percent, which is about 5 percent lower than some of the, uh, the higher priced ones out there on the market. Well, I had this inverter running for 20 minutes or so at its full load, and it didn't really seem to be getting all that warm. The uh, output temperature, output air temperature, is about 100 Fahrenheit. Uh, you can convert that into Celsius if you want. But it seemed to work pretty well, really. And uh, after the that test was over, I uh, ran a cord out here to my microwave which draws about 1400 watts um, when you turn it on. So I connected that to my microwave, the inverter ran it just fine. And also I was able to uh, turn on four 100 watt light bulbs while the microwave ran. And uh, I just had it running for 30 seconds, but five light bulbs would overload it, four would not. So I'm pretty impressed with this inverter overall. And uh, so far I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I'm going to do some other tests, probably off camera, with an oscilloscope, a uh, harmonic power analyzer, and other things, just to see how it performs. But the surge capability of it seems to be very good. The output waveform quality under load is quite good. The uh, no load current draw is fairly low, uh, lower than they advertise even. I like that the fans are thermally controlled. They seem to work pretty well. And overall, it seems to be designed pretty well. I'm quite happy with this inverter. I wasn't really expecting it to turn out this way. So I, uh, maybe this time that I'll conclude my OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt inverter review. For what I've seen so far, I would recommend this because it is quite inexpensive compared to other options. Thanks for watching.